Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're gonna make a tomato-based chili that doesn't have any tomatoes in it. And we will find out how that's possible right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So today we're going to make a tomato-based chili. With no tomatoes. But it doesn't have any tomatoes in it, but you would never know it when you taste it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, this is going to be one of the best, not just keto chilies you've ever had, but chilies you've ever had. Yeah, because chili traditionally has a lot of just fillers to make it stretch. So you got a lot of beans in it, yep. very little meat. This is very meat heavy. It is very meat heavy. It does have a little bit of fillers and there is an optional item that you could put in there. You can use uh, black soybeans, but we're yeah. not going to because the recipe that I have uploaded on our website doesn't have them, but once in a while we will add those. So the secret ingredient to today's chili is going to be the creamy tomato basil keto chow. Which is so wild, but the tomato flavor is gonna come out. It comes through so well. As a matter of fact, I submitted this recipe for the keto chow recipe challenge and I guess I came in second place. We came in first place for our chocolate toffee cheesecake. Mm -hmm. And Chris said this should have won the savory one too. He was like, that one was much better than the other one. And I'm sure the other one was awesome. Awesome. But Chris was like, this one was incredible. He's like, they both should have won. But that wouldn't have been fair for me to win both prizes anyway. No so, way. So do you want to get into how to do this? Because yes. this one is a little bit more time consuming. It's very easy to make. So easy that Rachel could make it? So easy that even Rachel could make it. Yay! But it is a little bit more time consuming. Okay. So let's go over the ingredients. We're gonna turn on our pot and then we'll pull the pot over. We have an arm hanging from our ceiling now. Yeah, so we are going to try this. I can't promise it's gonna work, but we have an overhead camera now from when we're doing the cooking so you can see everything. And then I also don't have to kind of tilt it and possibly spill everything. I never know what I'm coming home to. <laughs> never. Okay. So let's go over the ingredients. Obviously, we'll just put them way over to the side. We're going to need some keto chow, keto chow tomato basil flavor. You probably could use the spicy taco, but the tomato basil just comes through well with, let's leave it in the shot a little bit, with uh, the tomato flavor. Yeah. Next, we're gonna need some meat. Now, the meat mm -hmm. is kind of whatever you wanna do it. I like this combination of meat because it gives enough fat and flavor. So we're gonna use one pound of ground pork. I've cut it open to make it a little bit faster for us. We're gonna use a pound of ground pork and we're gonna use a pound and a half of ground beef. Now, if you don't wanna use ground pork, you can use all ground beef, whatever you wanna do. But two and a half pounds of meat. Nice. Then we're gonna use bacon. And I've already like to just make this go a little bit quicker, cut it up, but we've got six slices of bacon. I've got the thicker cut bacon. So um, I think so I have good. about five pieces in there. Wow. Just a nice amount of bacon. Then we're gonna use two green peppers. Obviously one's bigger than the other. That say. happens to be what I had, but. Um, wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. Like two medium sized. Two medium sized green peppers. We're gonna one have small and one giant. a medium yellow onion. Then we're gonna get into our spices. We're gonna use some garlic. Yum. And then here's our spices. We're gonna go uh, black pepper, chili powder, cumin, salt. Redmond real salt. Optional, okay, if you want it a little bit spicier, we're gonna, you can use some uh, ground uh, cayenne pepper. Don't blow my face off. And then finally, we need some beef broth or uh, beef stock. This happens to be what I had in the house. Usually I use like the organic stocks, but yeah. we happen to have this. It's so that's what we're gonna use. And then finally, this is the secret. This is optional, but it's gonna give it a nice flavor. We're gonna use some Lakanto monk fruit drops, or you can use stevia. Kind of makes sense though, because I have seen people put sugar in chili. Yes. 
So I like to have like a sweet, spicy kind of chili, and that is what makes this so good. Nice. So are you ready? I am. I've kind of prepared some things. I've already got our peppers and our onions chopped up and everything. Oh, wow. So we can put all of this to the side. You are way ahead. And we're going to pull over our pot. So it can hang from our ceiling. Okay, so I've already got the pot going, uh, getting hot. This is a cast iron pot. You don't have to use cast iron, but I just like the way the it holds the heat in well. It does. So I've got it on medium. So the first thing we're going to do, um, depending on how fatty your bacon is, you're going to put just like a tablespoon of oil in there. Mm -hmm. you can, there you're can. you going to look on the website. The recipe calls for coconut oil, but you can use coconut oil, avocado oil. You can even use olive oil because we're not getting it really hot. Right. We're just going to go about a tablespoon. Uh, it's honestly not even super necessary because you do oh, have... I can see my hand. Hi! Yeah. Ah! You do have your bacon that's going to have a lot of fat. And all we're going to do is right now is try to render down this bacon a little bit. Okay, so now here's what, are you cooking this or am I cooking this? I'll cook this. Okay, so what we're going to do is you want to spread your bacon around. And what you want to do is you want to cook the bacon, but you don't want to get it crispy. You just want to kind of render some of that fat out. Uh -huh. And we want to get it soft and cooked, but not crispy. Wow. Bacon that's not crispy. Joe, I have a question for you. Yep. Who does not like the smell of bacon cooking? I have no idea. Monsters? Yeah. Crazy people? There's nothing better than the smell. Wait, actually, wait, I'm going to correct that. I cannot stand the smell of bacon cooking when I'm sleeping in the morning. If you start cooking bacon and it I'm wakes sleeping you up. and just that smell gets through the whole house and it just, it wakes me up and kind of, I don't know, gets me a little sick. I don't know why. Oh, well, I only don't like it because it wakes me up. There's it definitely wakes you up. It depends on how you're cooking it. We started cooking it in the air fryer, and it's nowhere near as bad as it. It's when you're frying it, and all that grease is splattering, and it's getting on the stove, and it's kind of burning. That's the smell that I don't like. Yeah, I like cooking it in the air fryer because I don't want to wake up in my first tour of the day being, like, hosing down a yeah. greased-up kitchen. Yeah, it, the air fryer actually works out even better than the oven. Okay, so that's about perfect right there. You can see how uh, the fat is rendered out. The bacon is starting to cook. It's going to continue to cook as we're going, but again, you don't want it crispy. I just want to dive in there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our ground beef and our pork. Okay, so this actually was ground pork that we got at... Uh, the Butcher Box? Nope, not Butcher Box. We got it at Sprouts was on sale. Okay, so we've got our ground beef and what we're gonna do is we're gonna brown up our meat. And I got a little special tool for you here. I've got the spatulator. Oh my goodness. So this thing is awesome. If you guys have never seen this, if you do a lot of cooking of ground beef and you gotta brown up the ground beef, ground does pork. It turn it? What happens is when you just press straight down and it kind of chops it up. Oh, nice. Yeah, because sometimes it's hard for me to like convince it to separate with one of these guys. So there you go. So we're gonna just kind of brown that up. You wanna make sure that you get everything mixed up well. Make sure you're getting all the pork, the ground beef, and uh, the bacon all mixed up. You don't wanna just like the pork on one side, the ground beef on the other. There really needs to be a Yankee Candle that's this flavor. <laughs> okay, we're gonna let it go a little bit longer and then we're gonna start adding our vegetables. Okay, so now that the meat is mostly cooked, we're gonna go ahead and add in our veggies. So we've got, again, two medium green peppers. Now the entire recipe is down below. It's linked down below. It's on our website. And uh, so we have a medium onion and two small to medium sized peppers. And again, this, this is what's gonna add your bulk. This is taking the place of, of beans. all your beans and stuff. So you can go ahead and start mixing that around. It's funny, I still am not used to seeing this much vegetables in one spot anymore. And then you're gonna use, you can have your choice. You can either use like four to five garlic, uh, cloves of garlic, or like two and a half teaspoons of minced garlic. We just do this just because keep it simple. by the time we get to the garlic, it always ends up going bad. So yes. I just like having it like this. So we're gonna go about three teaspoons, which we, is about six cloves of garlic. We like to fight vampires, but let me tell you, I have bought so much garlic for the garbage can. Yeah. Because yeah, we totally forget to use it in time. And now what we're gonna do is let this cook for a couple of minutes and try to soften up our vegetables. Okay, now that our vegetables are pretty much softened up, we're gonna start adding all of our spices. 
Okay, so here's what I've got in the spices. We've, like I said, we've got chili powder, a couple of tablespoons. We've got cumin, about four teaspoons. We've got a teaspoon of black pepper, a couple teaspoons of salt. Um, everything is down below in the recipe. And again, you could make it a little bit spicier if you want. I tend to add a little bit more chili powder. Mm -hmm. um, basically, your cumin chili powder is almost two to one. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna add all of our spices. Wait, two to one cumin to chili powder. No, chili powder to cumin. Okay. Then we're gonna add in two scoops of the tomato basil keto chow. Go ahead and start mixing that around. And then while you're mixing that, I'm gonna start adding in, and we're gonna go two to three cups of a beef stock or beef broth. And now if you like your chili heartier, go about two, two and a half cups. If you like it a little bit more on the soupy side, some people like a little bit more watery, yeah. then you're gonna go three cups. Well, comment down below. Do you like your chili soupy or hearty? I like it kind of in between. I don't want it like where there's no liquid, but I don't want it where it's like a chili soup and it's very liquidy. I want some liquid in there, but not a whole lot. Okay, so we've got two cups in there. And what I like to do is like basically see how it's absorbing the water to judge how much more I'm gonna add in there. So to me, that's a little bit hearty already because we're gonna let this cook down a little bit. Right. So we're gonna add some more and we're gonna go probably about another, three, another cup. So we're gonna have a total of three cups in here. The last thing that we're gonna add, we're not gonna add any of our cayenne pepper. We're gonna add some Lincanto, 20 to 30 drops. So we're gonna go probably about a teaspoon. Wow. But that's for the whole pot. But that's the whole pot. So it's all mixed up. Now comes the hard part. Now we're gonna cover it back up and we're going to let it simmer for about an hour and a half to two hours. But I wanna eat it right now. Now with chili, it's like a soup. You gotta just let it cook for a while and let all of those spices and that goodness get absorbed into the meat. The longer you let the simmer, the better it's gonna taste. But I'm not a good waiter. I know you're not a good waiter, but we're gonna have to wait. So put it on like a low to medium heat, cover it up, let it simmer. Then the last half hour, if you want it hearty, take the top off and boil out some of that liquid. So we'll be back in a little bit. So we got through the toughest part of this recipe. What was that? Waiting for it to thicken up. Yes, it is the worst part is waiting for it. Uh, we had to go for about an hour and a half. The last like 15 minutes, I turned up the heat a little bit. I took the lid off and this is what we have. This is the consistency we like it. You can see it's pretty hearty, but it's still got a little bit of liquid in there. Yeah, I like it to be hearty if we're gonna eat it in a bowl just by itself, but yep. I also like it to be wet enough that if I wanna pour it over some cauliflower rice to serve it, it's gonna give it something to like wet the cauliflower rice Yeah, with. and again, I'm telling you, if you give this to a person who doesn't like do keto, they'll never know oh, no. this is like a keto kind of recipe. It's that good. So let's grab a bowl. We're gonna push this up here and uh, let's grab a bowl. So we'll go over the macros with this in a minute, but generally I scoop this out to be about eight servings. And of course, like it's not chili. Gotta top it. Unless we top it with a little bit of cheddar cheese. And sour cream. And then, yes, you gotta have a little bit of sour cream. Leave down in the comments below, how do you like to top your chili? Yes. Some people like a little bit of onions. Some people like a little bit of just parsley. Pre-keto, I like Fritos. Ew. Yes. They always smell like feet to me. <laughs> Never a Fritos person. So this is what we got. Okay, you ready? I almost spilled that out. Are you ready? That's a Rachel move. Here we go. I'm you gotta get a little bit of everything. Yeah. A little cheese, a little sour cream. Dink. Wow. It's amazing that there's no tomato in there. I mean, you have the tomato keto chow, but we didn't put any tomatoes. And because of that, it keeps the carbs on this really low. Because before we were making our chili, I have another chili recipe on the website, mm -hmm. which is really good as it's well. Delicious. But it is a couple carbs higher because I was using tomato paste. I was using like one tomato. 
doing it this way, I don't know, it just gets the perfect flavor. Yeah, because the, the sauce is almost like soupy. Yeah. Right? It's just, it's very hearty. It's like a built-in gravy yeah. to the sauce. So you don't have to add any shop. thickeners or anything like that. No. So let's go over the macros on this real quick. Okay. So like I said, I generally break this down into eight servings because the kids just devour it anyway. It's just gone. And doing that, everyone's going to get a little bit over a half a pound of meat. Wow. But you really can break this down into like 10, even 12 servings. Um, yeah, because based on eight servings, this isn't even a serving. Yeah, you get honestly, more it would be like a full bowl based on eight servings. Yeah. But based on eight servings, you're going to be looking at a 488 calories, 36 grams of fat, 35 grams of protein. Which is awesome. What is that, like 70%? It's about 70% fat. That's crazy. Then you're looking at nine total carbs and five grams of fiber, or four grams of fiber, so it's gonna be five net carbs. I think that's awesome, and I mean, I'm sure that you can cut down the carbs if you scale back on the peppers, scale back on the onions a little bit. Yeah, all the all those carbs are coming from the peppers and onion. That's where it's coming from. But I would say let's just keep them because it's so flavorful. I don't want to miss anything. Yeah, so it's not like you're you got a bunch of sugars or anything. It's all coming from the pepper and onion. But if you do want to cut it back a little bit, maybe use one pepper, maybe use a half an onion. That'll scale it back significantly. But it's not like you're having a bunch of sugars or anything like that in there. No. So I'm okay with them because they're vegetable carbs. And I think this is the perfect perfect make ahead meal going into the holiday season. Yep. You're going to have house guests, you want to make things ahead of time. This absolutely tastes better the next day and you're going to be able to serve your guests like a big giant bowl of comfort food. Yeah. So now I love the tomato basil keto chow just drinking as a soup, but when you start using it as a base like that, yeah. like this, that is where it just excels. It's all about the base. So there is a link down in the description for Keto Chow if you're interested in getting some. There's also coupon code, which is two crazy ketos. That's gonna get you 10% off. Um, and a little bit of disclosure, if you do use that link, it does give us a little bit of money to help support the channel. Yeah. But let us know down in the comments section what your favorite thing to eat with chili is. Yeah, whether you're topping it or whether you're pouring the chili over top. Yeah, because I used to love rice. Now I just want to kind of eat it almost like this. I used to always put um, crackers in oh, mine. Oh, yeah. I used to eat it with like oyster crackers. And now, yeah, it's so flavorful. I don't even eat it with anything anymore. Yeah, just maybe a little bit of cheese or sour cream to up some more fat, something like that. But So tasty. That's how I like it. So that is our video for today. Please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.